Okay, hi YouTube. Uh, just want to show you uh, a new charger that I've got. So I did a charger video back along, and uh, if you've watched that, you'll know that uh, I've got one of these. I've got a lot of X-Star chargers. Being very pleased with some of them, some of them not so much. So the best charger, uh, best XR charger that I've had, if you're my on, is probably the SV2, or possibly an older model that's very similar to this. A uh, little bit I didn't like about it, but the, generally this was, in my opinion, the best charger on the market for lithium ions. And um, this VC4 was one of the crappiest chargers on the market, so I was really disappointed with this one. Now what I have done recently is bought um, bought some four cell lights, or even eight cell on the way actually, and uh, I want to, I want to charge them all up at once. Now, if you watch my last video, you'll see I think this is a pile of crap. Um, the power supply to it is rubbish. The uh, charge rate's rubbish. The display's rubbish. Um, looks pretty initially, but it's rubbish. And um, yeah, it just wasn't any good. Uh, what I was going to do, which is a real shame because XTAR, like I say, make this, make this brilliant SV2. I was going to buy another one of these. And run two of them you can you can get a cable actually this this takes the normal 12 volt dc barrel connector and uh you can get one that splits into two so you could just run one off of a decent 12 volt power supply that was my intention however my box that i've turned up now they've been on the scene a little while they're fairly new to the game and they released a two bay back along and there's a there's a guy on some of the forums HKJ I think his name is he does some real thorough um, in-depth reviews on these things thermal imaging and logs all of the stuff on them masses of work and shares it with everyone <laughs> how he does it I don't know because it must take so much work to do these, these videos take way more than they should but what he does is next level <laughs> Uh, so he measures them all. The the two bay my boxer had a bit of an issue. The very first one he tested, I believe. They then they got representative on some of the forums. He looked at it and he he came back, revised it, and they fixed it. And they made a very good two bay charger. Uh, as it happened, I already had the XTAR rocket, the SV2. I um, was very happy, so I wasn't wasn't prepared to look at it really. The VC4 was a disappointment. I kept looking. They came out with this, the My Boxer, and this one is the C412. Now this one I was particularly interested in. They they have done an older uh, four channel one. I'm not sure the number, but it's not. It looks very similar. So be careful if you're after this one. But this is the C4-12, and that means. I believe it means four bay, twelve amp total. This thing can actually put in three amps into each bay simultaneously. Now that's a lot of charge. Um, you might get away with it with the high drain, the high drain eighteen six fifties. A lot of the vapors use the very high drain cells, and they'll probably cope with it quite well. Or as you step up into the bigger cells, so the uh, 26650, 32650, or even the um, sort of Elon Musk 2170s, etc. So they're they're um, they're probably going to cope with it more. You will get reduced life. I can live with that. These things are five or each, and um, to lose a couple hundred cycles when you get a thousand out of them is is no biggie. Um, waiting all night for a charger to finish. Next start. Um, is no good. Uh, my time's more valuable than these crappy little cells. So this thing, if I load this up, it does half an amp in each bay. And that's if you're lucky. Your power supply is capable. It doesn't trip down to 0.2 as it sometimes does. Um, and this will do them at, at three amps each. So we've got six times the power of that. Now I won't quite charge six times as fast because as a battery charges when it's low it will take those three amps. As the 
as the voltage comes up it will be under what they call a constant current stage of the charge and are currently limited to those 3 amps as those 3 amps are pumped in the voltage comes up it will reach 4.2 volts and then to maintain that voltage and not go over it the current starts coming down and these then terminate when the current gets to a low enough point um, so it won't go 6 times as fast but I did put a set in this the other night and I did two sets in this in the time that that wasn't even halfway so you're looking at four times the speed it really is it really is much much quicker and um, there's just no comparison honestly if you're considering buying a VC4 don't, don't even bother look at the uh, look at the my boxer and get that that is without the other features of it so it does need a relatively hefty power supply which is fair enough because this thing pumps up to 12 amps like I said and it comes with this one this is a A-OK -okay. now all key technology I guess that's what it is, what it is. and it's a 12 volt 5 amp power supply looks fine cable coming out looks relatively beefy it's got this like figure of 8 connector and um, in the UK decent plug an actual proper proper plug you know, unbreakable excellence in quality um, but decent plug which is quite unusual on some Chinese stuff you know it's got the thumb guards and that the insulation there yeah looks fairly good so reasonable power supply without opening it up and looking inside that just pops in the barrel connector 12 volt normal barrel, barrel connector so actually I'm not sure yes it's, a, it's the same as the uh, XR it's a really common barrel connector I can't remember what it is 5.5 mil or something does have power bank function um, I'm just going to avoid that it's, I think it's fairly pointless on a 4 bay charger because I think it only works off of bay 4 uh, but I don't want one of these as a as a power bank anyway a small one makes more sense the single the single bay chargers yes they, they make sense in my opinion not these big ones um, so we get this screen now this thing isn't perfect I'm not, you know, I'll show you why but it is pretty good um, so we'll pop a cell and this is an unprotected 30Q made by Samsung okay so let's have a look at what we've got so this thing's showing a, a charge percentage charging time the accumulated milliamp hour so that counts up as it charges the current going in the voltage the impedance which uh, is a really nice thing to have and the temperature did I miss one there no, I think that was that milliohms um, volts yeah so it flashes away up here indicating that it's charging that flashes that flashes and this scrolls through so that's a bit annoying I don't like all the flashing so if we load it up I'll just show you what, what I dislike let's chuck all of these in so it's flashing everywhere and I just don't, I just don't like the It'll, it's flashing too much in my opinion fair enough maybe if it if they had to have it flash it would have been better to have a bar graph going up you know like on the power bank like that sort of bar display it goes up as you as it's charging so you can see at a glance but you've got the percentage there so it doesn't matter anyway mi real minor niggle otherwise just so much more than the X-Tar so the X-Tar on this VC4 you just got the voltage around there the accumulated milliamp hour and charging current so the voltage was actually I just found awkward it wasn't exact you get that there you get the impedance you don't get the time on this one I don't think you don't get the temperature and uh, it's not as smart so what you'll notice like I said this shows the impedance of the battery and the, the internal impedance of the cell and what it'll do is the lower that impedance generally the more current the cell can take so it will actually take that value this one's 51 milliohms 
and then it will decide on the best charge current for that cell and in this case it's 1.8 amps it's actually flicking around a little bit but it's putting in 1.8 amps so if you put in a higher resistance cell which this is a protected um, it's not a 30 q that's a that's a protected 26f this will almost certainly be much higher impedance um, so it, it takes a minute to read it that so it's come at 165 and it's just going to charge that at 0 0.1 0.11 amps so that's a very low charge rate I'd actually get higher in the X dot in that example that's quite a high impedance um, so it and it errs on the edge of safety so what you can do is then you can hold the button down and the current will flash and then you can pick a higher charge rate Okay, so you can pick anything you want within that range. And the last one, it flashes the A, showing that you're on the automatic setting. So I think it works perfectly. It it, it um, conservatively guesstimates the charge rate, charges at that, so you're pretty safe. It'll take longer. If you need to speed it up, just go in and tell it to, to charge at the higher rate. I wish I could do that on the extra. And um, it'll monitor the it'll monitor the thermals as well. And if they get over sixty, I think it cuts back, etc. Um, so it's all there. Uh, termination, I did check it. it pretty much bang on four point two zero. No issues at all there. People get really anal about that termination voltage. It's not it's not that critical, honestly. I've, I've been in discussions. People um, people worried about it going to. 4.21 so 4.20 honestly that makes no difference and if it if it finishes in the the cells at 4.18 4.16 15 even that's still fine honestly it's, it's nothing to worry about the higher the termination voltage the less life you'll get out of them it won't affect it to any noticeable amount in my opinion on those levels and what you've got to bear in mind is also when you remove one of these cells the four point two volts applied to it is then removed the voltage from the cell must be lower um, because otherwise it wouldn't be charging it would be discharging so it must be lower once you pull it out and it will drop those couple of millivolts nothing to worry about at all um, so yeah this is highly recommended I've charged it I had it on high and it was charging uh, I think I, I think I did four 30 Qs at two amps so uh, there was no issue, it didn't even get warm, I was expecting it to uh, to be hot. No issue at all. Um, the only issue I have had, now I've got a proper calibrated impedance tester for batteries and that works in a different way, so you get different readings. Um, so mine's generally what the industry standard measures impedance with and that's an AC current through these and they measure that. These work in a different way, they measure the they measured a DC uh, a DC load is across it I think and then it measures it measures the uh, impedance that way so it's a, it's a different reading it will give you a different value uh, what is very critical I don't know what to do with them these is the contact pressure and these springs they do are pretty good sometimes particularly on the larger cells is fine then is the uh, milliohm you see that it's gone to 0.3 you can't stop it not uh, 34 milliohms um, so if I do that again but this time I put pressure I'm pushing tighter so that that is tighter on there probably not going to do it now I'm showing you on video no it's not <laughs> it's actually gone higher so on a few cells I did have I haven't got them down here in the shed um, I did have readings of like 100, 200 milliohms, and it was doing a low charge rate. What I did is put the cell in, and then just put a little bit of pressure on there. I think because they were the bigger cells, he set up higher on these. And when I did that, I got a, I got a better reading, a much lower reading, which I would suspect is much more accurate than the reading I was getting before that, because it was probably measuring resistance there. 
on those contacts. So that's the only thing to bear out in mind. You might get a low read and just glance at it. It will, it will not only um, make you worry when your cells is stuffed, but it will charge that cell slower. So you may end up with three fully charged cell and one with still six hours to go or something, whereas put a silly charge rate in. Um, but it is useful, the milliamp hour reading, very handy, because if you've got a high reading on one of them, you know that cell is stuffed. What I would do to double check that is I would shift them around and um, make sure that that cell reads the same on every slot. You haven't got a dodgy contact, push it, you know. But if I've got four, four of these in there, they're all reading in the 30s and this one's 100, I'm going to be binning this one or using it separately on its own. It's not going to be able to go in into a series like with these. I wouldn't even put it parallel, it would work, but that's uh, that's what I would do, probably bin it. Um, <coughs> It will also give you an indication of what would be a good power light, a well powered light, because these uh, Panasonic, they've got real good capacity, but the the higher rate you discharge them at, they don't they don't work as well, and they actually run out of power before the 30 Qs at higher rates, and you'll see that with the impedance reading. So high reading generally means they won't work as well. In a high discharge light or whatever you, your application is. So we just give it a second, you see a difference here. So that's an unprotected Panasonic, which is a high capacity but um, low current discharge cell, really. The Samsung is slightly lower capacity but higher discharge rate. And then I've got a Sony wall, which I think this is a, this is a Sanyo cell, it's 2.8. So this is that's quite an old one, and it's protected, which will really knock it up. The protection cells really knock the impedance up. That's why protected cells they seem like a good idea, but they're not. Um, they're not always the best idea. Right, so this moves along, so you can see what which cell you're looking at. So we're looking at the Samsung 56 milliohm. Let's go on to this protected one. I'm going to get a high reading now. 999. Okay, that's mainly probably the protection and then the Panasonic we're going to get 80 okay so we can clearly see just by that without knowing anything about the cells that the Samsung is going to be the best for a high discharge application let's pop these two out and avoid any confusion let's get back to this one and just see now if I hold it in I'll reset it hold it in and see if we can drop that 999 um, you can see it's quite tight in there a bit of pressure on. Now the bays are deeper, these bays definitely are deeper and feel nicer than the X-Star. I don't know, it sounds like I'm really banging that X-Star, but... Um, right, here we go, this is the example I was trying to prove. So now we're getting a reading of 198, so this, you know, that's falling 800 milliohms, and it's almost certainly just the uh, contact pressure on here, so that's where you must you must check that really unless you want to be chucking out good cells that's one thing to look at but anyway I've rambled on for long enough like I usually do and I can only suggest that this is this is going to be my go-to charger from now on it will take um, it will do nickel metal hydride as well I'm not sure this is something I took out of a I think this was a toothbrush actually so I pop a nickel metal hydride in there and it immediately comes up on the screen and it works the same, it will give you an impedance reading and it will guesstimate the the current. I, d I have done an any loop on it, that was fine, charged perfectly. I'll keep an eye on it, I will update you if I have any issues with the charger. So, though it's not quite perfect, I think it's probably the best 4 base charger on the market at the minute. Um, and I'm quite pleased with it. I can put this in the scrap bin. So thanks for watching. Bye.